Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Pythonic Accountant. Today we have a very special episode because we have reached our first milestone for the YouTube channel, a thousand subscribers. So thanks everybody for your awesome support. Really appreciate it. And please spread the word. Um, would love to get to some more milestones and have some more fun videos to share. So today we've got a few really interesting things I've been really excited to show you guys. Um, so first I'm going to show you a uh, way to code with Python on the web that does not require you to download anything on your computer. Um, two of my favorite ways are through Google and through Microsoft. The Google version, which we're going to show you today, is called Colab, and the Microsoft version is called Azure Notebooks. They're very similar with some slight differences. Um, I prefer the Google one for a few reasons, um, but for all intents and purposes, they're basically the same. One cool thing about the Google one is you can integrate with your Google Drive very easily, um, but it's also not hard to do that with Microsoft. Um, and so the format is going to look somewhat similar in that it is a notebook format. Um, I've actually got it in dark mode now just because I like dark mode, but you can actually switch it to uh, light mode, which is kind of the normal, slightly more similar to the way that you've seen the other videos. So I'll actually do this one um, in light mode because I think it's, it's easier to see. Hopefully it's easier for you to see as well. Um, the other thing that I've been really interested in showing you guys for a while is uh, how to take a scanned PDF or an image that does not have any OCR and perform an OCR function using Python um, without having to go and open up any other application and then perform uh, some steps to extract the text. So there, there's a reason why I'm actually using this in the Google Colab rather than just on my computer. Um, and that main reason is the libraries that are required to perform this are, you're able to install them on a Microsoft computer, but it's uh, quite a few extra steps. And so in order to show the easiest way to do it um, is to use, honestly, use a Linux machine. I think Macs are good for doing this too. Um, and so the interesting thing is the Colab is sitting on top of a Linux machine uh, in the cloud. And so the steps to install the libraries you need are very simple and they're shown right here. So you can actually do this yourself if you have a Google account. Um, and like I said, you can do it on a Microsoft computer, but you have to actually install several supporting libraries manually uh, versus being able to do it easily here. So let me start by showing you the PDF file that we're going to try and read. So this is um, a, an image of an invoice that has, as you can see, it's not OCR, it's actually kind of a, a crappy uh, image. It's not very well scanned, which is supposed to demonstrate, you know, somewhat of a real uh, invoice. Now, this isn't super realistic because, uh, you know, you may find invoices that are skewed and scanned, you know, kind of sideways or have a lot of background noise. It turns out those can get a little more difficult to read the data from. Um, and so, you know, this is not an all-inclusive, perfect solution, but if you have scanned images and you're trying to automate the process of pulling data from those images, this is actually a pretty good way to do it. Um, so we're going to try and grab data from here. Um, let's say we want to get the balance due. Maybe we want to get, you know, the individual line items. We'll see what happens when we get there, what we want to get. But um, first off, we're going to show how to install the uh, one library that I found recently that I like called OCR My PDF. <laughs> Pretty straightforward what you think it means. Um, and it actually uses underneath the hood a very powerful library called Tesseract, which is a Google OCR uh, library. So Tesseract is pretty awesome. A lot of documentation around it. Um, not going to get too much into the Tesseract stuff specifically, but just know that we're using that beneath the hood on this OCR My PDF. And OCR My PDF is pretty cool. You can actually use it and code in Python with it, but I'm actually using it for the, um, the you know, command prompt application of it. And so basically what it allows you to do is once you've downloaded it, you can just from the command prompt type OCR My PDF and the PDF that you want to OCR and then the resulting file name. And so here's, here's the basic example, OCR My PDF input name, output name. And I'll show you how you can do that within the notebook itself. So first off, in order to download uh, and install the OCR My PDF, you do um, the exclamation mark allows you to actually access your command prompt through this uh, window. And then this is kind of a typical Linux installation, uh, you know, command. And so basically, we're going to install OCR My PDF. 
So we'll kick that off, and you'll see it's running a whole bunch of stuff, but um, looks like I've already installed it, so you're not going to see uh, the big, long installation. Actually, you know what? Let's uh, restart the runtime, and now you'll see it install for good. So this is the full-out installation. Uh, oh, it looks like it already we already have it, so we'll see what happens. Um, next, we're going to install PDF Plumber. So PDF Plumber is another Python uh, library that we're going to use. And so now we're going to import the libraries that we need. So OS, this is how we're going to run the command line um, to OCR the PDF. Then these are the, actually, we don't even need OCR my PDF library, so I'm going to get rid of that one. But we're going to use requests to download uh, this image because I'm too lazy to upload it, and I had saved it uh, on the internet. And then this is uh, PDF Plumber is a library you've seen in some of my other videos where we use to plumb the PDF quite easily. So we're going to import these libraries. Um, now we're creating a helper function. This is going to basically download the file from a URL. You don't really need to do this if you already have the PDF on your local machine or on your drive here, which you can um, add files to your drive. But um, for our purposes, I like showing how you can download something from, uh, from a web page as well. So we're going to just run that. Um, so here, we're defining where the location of this invoice is. And so I've got a short URL here just to make it easy uh, to see. And then the invoice PDF is saving it. Um, what it, you're getting back is the file name. And so this file name is going to be the local file name uh, to which it is downloaded. And you'll see if I add a piece of code here, it's just saved as, uh, oh, interesting, 2UJ, <laughs> yeah, let's, well, okay, let's see what happens. And so what this is gonna do is um, we're gonna open that file name as a PDF, and we're gonna try to extract the text, and this is gonna come back with nothing because it is not an OCR PDF, so it doesn't have any text in it. And now what we're going to have to do is um, actually, instead of taking this input, we're going to use an F string and just grab the file name. That way, if we ever wanted to change what we were doing, we can use a different file name. So this is going to try OCR my PDF file name input, file name output. And if this returns a zero, um, then that is good. And we'll see what happens. Good. Um, another thing we can do is let's say we wanted to, let's go ahead and download, download that again. So that way it doesn't um, show up as having been done. Now we're going to try to OCR my PDF using the command prompt. Uh, so OCR my PDF, and the file name is 2UJGUPO. Uh, and what we're going to do here is see what uh, additional information we get from the command line. So this one it doesn't give you all the command line results. Um, this one will tell you kind of what it's doing along the way, which is, is really helpful. Um, so, okay, yeah, warning, it's unsure about page orientation, but nothing else. And then output file is a PDF as expected. So that's good. Now let's go ahead and see if we can get some text now. So just as a refresher, we're looking for this, something like this. And sure enough, look at that. You've got, it's probably not perfect, but that looks pretty darn close to me. Um, especially for this, you know, kind of mediocre, uh, quality of a scan like I think that's actually pretty good so let's just spot check okay 284480 yep you got that right you got like 50 okay so we see a few errors here like it didn't look like it picked up the $50 unit price for the installed new kitchen sink but it did get the total 150 um, you've got uh, a Toto sink it's supposed to be uh, oh interesting it's supposed to be 500 but it picked it up as dollar sign zero zero so you know, one thing we could do here is we could double check the subtotal um, and see if it adds up to what we would expect to add up. And then, you know, if it doesn't, then we know we've got a problem. And I mean, we already figured that out by spot checking, but that's always something good to do anyway. So let's try that real quick. So lines equals, we're splitting them by the new line character. And then checking the lines, you can see you've got these lines. So um, it, let's say we didn't know which lines had the dollar amounts in it. Uh, we could say we want the ones that uh, we can, you know, import some regex. And let's say we want the, you know, amounts re equals re.compile. And we want the ones that, let's say, end with a 
uh, a, you know, a point and uh, two numbers. And let's see if that works. And then for line and lines, um, if amount re dot search line print line. And let's see if that works. And sure enough, that gives us basically what we're looking for. Um, oh, one thing I probably should have done is said this, we want it through the end. And so, okay, now this only gives us the ones that have a period and a zero and, a, and two numbers at the end. So now what I'm gonna do is, let's say we want everything before the subtotal. So let's see, let's go ahead and say subtotal equals zero for line and lines if subtotal in line uh, let's do break otherwise if amount dot search line let's do subtotal plus equals uh, da, 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 line dot split and we're splitting the line by spaces and we want the last item in the line but we need to turn it into a float, and we need to uh, convert. Uh, there's no commas there. Uh, yeah, I don't see any commas, so don't have to worry about that. Let's go ahead and do that, though. Replace. If there were commas, we want to replace it with no string, and we want to replace dollar signs with no string. With no string. And let's see what that does. CBT and uh, oh <laughs> subtotal plus equals that would help da -da -da, da -da, 2090 and then let's read the lines again and our subtotal is supposed to be 2590 so yeah sure enough uh, we are off by 500 um, and that looks like it's from that one error where it turned a five into a dollar sign. So as you can see, this is not perfect, um, but it's pretty pretty cool. And if you add some checks in like this uh, to validate that, you know, if the amount that you're expecting it to be does not match up with the amount you calculate a total to be, that's a great way to get some comfort through, you know, if you're automating stuff like this, you can get comfortable whether you think it probably got everything right or not. Um, so anyways, there you have it. You've got a little bit of introduction to the Google Colab. Don't forget, you got the really cool dark mode, which uh, that's my favorite right there. Yeah, beautiful. And, um, you know, it's got uh, full features of Python. You can pip install anything. You can apt get stuff for the Linux, like here. You can do data visualization. Um, so it, it's a great way to add, you know, do some Python uh, if you either can't install it on your computer or if you just feel like trying some stuff that you know you don't want to pip install or have trouble pip installing because sometimes things uh, have challenges doing so. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you liked it, please click like. And if you want to see more videos like it, please click subscribe. And uh, if you have any suggestions or comments, go ahead and throw a comment up there. I try to reply to everything. And uh, as always, have a great day and we'll see you guys next time.